Hello everyone! In this MATLAB and control engineering tutorial, we will learn how to discretize continuous time simulink block models and how to export the discretized simulink models back to MATLAB workspace such that you can perform additional analysis and additional computations with exported models. The first step, of course, is to start simulink. We start simulink by typing simulink in the command window. Next, click over here to create a blank model. We will model a system consisting of two transfer functions. But before we define our system, it's a good idea to explain how the transfer functions are defined in Simulink. Let me give you an example. Let's say that your transfer function looks like this. W is equal to S plus 5 over S squared plus 7S plus 10. How do we define this transfer function in Simulink? Let's learn how to do that. Double click over here and search for transfer function. Here it is. Enlarge this block, then double click on this block. And over here, we need to specify numerator coefficients and denominator coefficients. In our case, the numerator coefficients are one, since I have one multiplying s, and five multiplying s to the power zero. And the coefficients in the denominator are one multiplying s squared, one, seven, ten. Okay, this transfer function is obviously stable because all the coefficients in the denominator are positive. So we have 1 and 5 over here, and in the denominator we have 1, then we have 7, and then we have 10. And click OK. And over here you can actually see the transfer function, s plus 5 over s squared plus 7s plus 10, and that's it. I can erase this part. Next, let's define the second transfer function. Again, double click over here search for transfer function, expand, and over here I will specify my transfer function, it will be s plus 5 over, let's do something like this, s to the power 3 multiplying 2s squared multiplying 3s plus 8, and click on OK, and here it is, expand this block to see the transfer function. Okay, now connect these transfer functions and over here we will specify an input signal. An input signal will be a simple constant. So double click here and search for constant. Here it is. Connect constant over here, then expand this block, then double click over here and search for scope. Okay, so here's our scope. The scope is used to plot the result. Make sure that the output of this transfer function is connected to the scope. OK, now we are ready to simulate our transfer function. As a stop time, we can, for example, use 20 seconds and click over here to run the simulation. Good, let's see the simulation results. Double click over here and let's see the results. Here they are. Okay, so is this system unstable? Obviously it is unstable because these oscillations grow over time. This is direct consequence of this transfer function. Since this transfer function is stable, however this one is unstable. Let's fix this. Over here I will simply change the numbers. For example, I will define the second order transfer function and since all the coefficients in the denominator are positive, this transfer function is actually stable. Let's run this simulation and let's see the result. And here it is. We can see a beautiful step response. Perfect. Next, 
let's change the names of these transfer functions. So double click over here and change the name of this transfer function. For example, let's call it W1 and the name of this transfer function should be W2. Perfect. Another thing what I like to do, you can simply select your block, then over here you can create area and then you can type another thing. This is our first transfer function and this will be our second transfer function. So select, select, click here and we will call this block second transfer function. Okay, let's continue. The next step is to discretize this continuous time model. How to do that? Well, click on apps and over here expand this block. Under control systems, you need to find the proper app. Let's see. It's not steady state manager, it's not linearization manager, it's not model linearizer. So where it is? Here it is, model discretizer. So make sure that you can find model discretizer. Click on the model discretizer and wait, be patient. It will take some time for the model discretizer to load. Okay, so let's try to see what's happening over here. Expand this. First of all, there are several discretization methods in control theory. Over here, you can see some of the classical methods. You can see zero order hold. This means that the input is kept constant between two sampling time instance, you have first order hold, you have the famous Tustin, Tustin with pre-wrapping and matched pole zero. For the time being, we will select the simplest possible, zero order hold. Over here, we can select a sampling time. For example, let's select 0 0.1. Now, over here, we have several options. Replace current selection with, and then you have discrete blocks and enter parameters in the S domain. This means that if, for example, you have a controller that depends on some parameters, the parameters will be entered in continuous time domain and then they will be discretized. So let's keep this option. And let's see over here. If you click over here, all the S variables will be changed to Z variables. Z variable is the complex variable in the discrete time domain. So click over here and then you can simply close this block. Of course, you also have some other options over here. However, these options you can explore by yourself. Okay, close this block and let's see what happened over here. Now, you can see ZOH. This means zero order hold. This means that this is actually discretized. If you click over here, you will see that this is now discretized since you have a sampling time of 0 0.1. Similarly over here you have the sample time of 0 0.1. Another thing that you need to do is that you need to discretize this block over here just to be consistent. So set over here the sample time to be 0 0.1. Okay, now let's simulate this system. Click on simulation and click on run. And let's see the output. Okay, nicely, nicely, it looks very nice. We can see this discretization over here. Now everything is in the discrete time domain. Perfect. Next, we explain how to export analytical forms of these transfer functions to the MATLAB workspace. However, some of you might stop me over here and ask me the following question. Why do we need analytical forms of transfer functions? Well, the answer is that in order to design advanced model-based controllers or estimators, you would need analytical forms of transfer functions. Let's learn how to do that. The idea for exporting the analytical forms is actually to use the model linearizer. In our case, the model is linear. So if we linearize the linear model, we will actually get the original model since the linearization produces the exact model if the model is linear. And that's the trick. Let's learn how to do that. 
To apply the linearization in MATLAB, we need to define inputs and outputs. For the presentation brevity and clarity of this video tutorial, I will explain how to export W2 and how to export the product of W2 and W1. The idea over here is to use model linearizer. Now, we need to go down that path since I don't know a better option how to export models from Simulink to the MATLAB workspace. The idea over here is that if we linearize a linear model, we will exactly obtain a linear model. That is, the linearization will not change the model. Consequently, if you use this trick, we will be able to accurately export this transfer function and the product of W2 and W1. To apply the linearization, we need to define the inputs and outputs. Obviously, the input of this transfer function is over here and the output is over here. Here's the input and here's the output. How do we define inputs and outputs in Simulink? To define the input, click over here, then do the right click, click on linear analysis points and click on input perturbation. Then to define the output, click on this line, then do the right click, linear analysis points, output measurements. Okay, so if you linearize the model from here to here, the linearized model will actually be W2. Next, let's learn how to define inputs and outputs for W2 and W1. Obviously the input is here and the output is here. Since we already have the input, we don't need to change anything. So click over here, do the right click, linear analysis points, and then over here, select output measurements. Good. What will happen over here? We will actually export a transfer matrix. The transfer matrix will look like this. Here you're going to have W2, and over here you will have in the second block row, W2 multiplying W1. Next, we need to start the model linearizer. To start the model linearizer, click on apps, then expand this menu over here, then search for control systems and find the model linearizer. Expand the model linearizer. Okay, now, over here, click on body. To generate the body plot of our linearized model, or better to say of our transfer functions. So this body plot over here, that is these two graphs, represent the body plot of W2. These two graphs represent the body plot of W2 multiplying W1. And notice what happened over here. Now, over here, you will see linsys1. That's exactly our linear system represented by this transfer matrix. Now, to export this linear system to the MATLAB workspace, simply select linear system and drag it over here. This will copy our linear system to the MATLAB workspace. Go back to MATLAB. Let's investigate the workspace. In the workspace, type whose, and you can see your linear system. Let's further investigate our linear system. Here it is. Okay, hmm, looks complex. Let's simplify this linear system. Here, here's what I will do. I will define a transfer matrix and this transfer matrix will be the output of the function TF. The function TF is the function for defining the transfer function or for extracting a transfer function from different models. Let's evaluate this. Okay, let's see now our transfer matrix. Here it is. We have W1 and we have W2. So what is W2? Let's analyze. This is from input constant to the output of W1. Uh -huh. So the output of W1 is actually in transfer function calculus, a product of W2 multiplying W1. This is very important. Don't be confused. This is actually not 
w1 on our simulink graph this is actually from input constant that is from the input all the way on the left to the output as you can see over here w1 it is from here until the output of w1 similarly the second block of the exported matrix is actually from here to here notice over here that I actually permuted this should be actually w2 multiplying w1 in the first block row and w2 should be on the second block row but it doesn't matter you can manually extract and access these transfer functions by simply typing transfer matrix 1 this will actually give us w2 multiplying w1 and the second one if you want to extract will be transfer matrix 2 and this will actually be our w2 next let's compare the step responses of the extracted ones with the step response of our system in simulink okay let's use this step of transfer matrix one this will actually compute the step response of the complete system and here it is okay now let's bring back the simulink simulation and here's the simulink simulation we can see that actually these graphs are identical this is very good this means that we can properly extract our transfer matrices and transfer functions from the simulink model okay that's all for today